everybody we are back it is taped on live favorite is podcast favorite is channel favorite is everything you already know what to do hit the subscribe button subscribe 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 hit the like button if you like it hit the dislike button if you don't like it leave a comment if you like it leave a comment if you don't like it also follow us on twitter at the mark john nfl for me at m holder 95 for matt and of course pandasubs.com discount code tdl for 35 percent off all right <clears throat> So we're doing the Panthers preview today. Um, it's going to be interesting. They changed quarterback, so I'm asking <laughs> to be going over Andy Dalton and Adam Thielen a little bit. Um, and I'm going to be doing just kind of just go do it. I'm doing JC Horn mostly, JC yeah. Horn, and then um, this terrible run game. I, I'm, I actually thought about <laughs> not even breaking it down. Just let let's letting it play and just let everybody watch <laughs> and see how this is going to look. So. Um, to start there, if they can't run the ball this game, it's gonna be a long season. This, it's, I, don't, I don't know how to. I can't even explain it. I don't even want to talk about yeah. the run game anymore after this. Is like we suck at running the football. <laughs> this, this, this is the, the litmus test right here. You, Do you know the Raiders? Talk? The Raiders right now are the only team that haven't hasn't rushed for over a hundred yards. Even the Rams, who have like half their offensive line on IR right now, have a hundred yards, and they're second to last. Like that's tough. That's tough luck. <laughs> So if they can't run the ball this week, man, they suck, and we just gotta let it go. We, we, we can't. We're, it's not gonna be uh, just no breakdown for it. There's no need to talk about it anymore. I'm not gonna talk five about wide, it. five wide for the rest of the season. <laughs> we're, we're Gardner Mitchell's gonna throw 600 times. That's, <laughs> if if they can't run the ball this week, that, that's that's really how I feel about it. Because th- this is literally one of the worst run defenses I've seen in a, in a long time. Like Good Alvin Kamara. Was not touched a couple times, for like till he got to like 14 yards downfield. He wasn't touched. Okay, um, that's good. And, and then last week, the, the Chargers were like, "We don't even have to pass." At one point, I, I you know, I think it was more because we found out on Friday Justin Herbert hurt his ankle. Um, and I actually showed a play. I'm going to show the play where I think it happened, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that, did it happen in practice or was that? Uh, I don't remember honestly. To be to to be perfectly honest with you, I was kind of surprised. I I was late on the. Uh, to find out that um, Herbert had hurt his ankle. I think I didn't find out till like Thursday or Friday, so I'm not sure. But. Yeah. Well, they didn't tell us till, till Friday. They didn't tell us till yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> because Mr. Harbaugh, he's Harbaugh. Bill Belichick with the injury reports. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to tell you guys. Uh, Justin Herbert has a high ankle sprain. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm going to show you guys the play where I think it happened, too. So, um, But, yeah, we're, I'm going over the, uh, that. And then you are going over Ad- Andy Dalton and Adam Thielen. What would you see from – from that matchup that you saw yeah i'll put it this way i wish uh dave canales had waited a week to to make the quarterback change um you know i do think this is an offense that the raiders can stop and i do like the way they match up but i'll tell you what man and i tease this a little bit in the ravens review like dalton and thielen were cooking in the one game that that dalton started in last year i think dalton finished with like 360 through the air um thielen had his most productive game uh with dalton which no coincidence he had like 140 and a touchdown and i think what what I noticed most or what stood out to me most and we'll see, take a look at is it's very clear, even though they're two guys that like don't get a ton of reps together. Or, Cause I imagine even last year in training camp, they were giving Bryce young all the first team reps or as many as they could. And then this year is probably the same thing too. Um, but Dalton and Thielen, I think, and again, I think it's because they're, they're both have like a, or combined have like a, a quarter century worth of experience in the NFL. Um, they were on the same page a lot and they kind of were like reading each other's minds. And again, uh, you know, I think you can see a lot of like their these two veteran guys that even though they don't have a ton of time together, they're they're on the same page a lot. And a lot of scramble drills were, were how they got a good chunk of their yards. And two, like they were on the same page with a lot of coverage reads. Like there's one look that we'll take us that we'll see at where the Seahawks did. They started in one high, shifted it, rolled the cover two, and mm-hmm. uh, then ran Tampa two out of it. And Thielen's running a seam read and, and Dalton and uh, and Dalton hits him in stride, like very clear that they were. Uh, seen it the same way and there was a lot going on in that play so yeah it's it's definitely not as comforting knowing that dalton's um dalton's gonna be starting at quarterback is 3-0 against Ra- the raiders as a starter and uh again like he's pretty impressive in that one game last year so we'll see how things unfold this week yeah so uh, i just want to go back to my peyton manning take over the summer and uh <laughs> adam Thielen would lead the league in in, in touchdowns uh, I- <laughs> hey they they lost that game though they still lost the game because they gave up 37 and by two possessions. <laughs> Adam Thielen leads the league in yards. <laughs> he gets the quarterback. All right, anyways. Uh, 
so yeah, so that's that's super interesting, you know. This it, and you know it is a, a different coordinator. So, um, you know, Canales is still a West Coast guy, I would say. I'm yeah, sure I'm watching it. I, I think he he might be a little bit Air Corey a little bit, still a little bit. Um, but <clears throat> he's not like your typical West Coast guy like Getsy and McCarthy's and the Shanahan's those type of guys. So it, it might be a little bit different. Um, but uh, yeah, if they have a connection, I mean, there's. They went to Andy Dalton early. I, you know, um, you know, some people were saying it's the owner. Some, some one guy was saying the owner came down and made a decision. But you know, which After would making make the sense. decision to pick Bryce Young. <laughs> that would that would that would make sense because that <laughs> owner's crazy, and yeah. uh, he'd be walking on the field and stuff. He thinks he's Jerry Jones and he hasn't done anything. But um, yeah, it was that that switch. It it, it was very, uh, I would say, just quick. You know, yeah. you definitely want to give Bryce Young more time, but we're going to see Andy Dalton, see what the hell he looks like uh, this week. But, you know, also I'm going over J.C. Horn, which, you know, I, I think you can beat J.C. Horn one-on-one, but I just think he's a solid player. I think he's just yeah. – he's, he's their secondary is pretty pretty solid. They got Mike Jackson, um, I think Nick Shook. Nick Shook, I believe, is uh, the name. If I get these names wrong, I, I got uh, – Nick Scott. Nick Scott. Scott. There you go. And then they got uh, Xavier Woods and Jordan Fuller. Fuller. Yeah. Yeah. So so they're pretty good at the safety position, I think. In that corner, they got Mike Jackson and they got J.C. Horn, um, who, who are, you know, Horn is highlights right now are him getting beat deep, that he's got beat deep twice. But yeah. – there's a, uh, there's a whole they've also played like 60 snaps so you can see the other snaps <laughs> he's doing pretty well right he's he they just are very coached well um their their dc is holding it down for them um it's uh the old broncos i feel it's like i can't say his name it's like Evero, right Evero, yeah yeah so yeah, yeah they're coached really well man over there uh they, they got they're just always in the right spot they're rarely in the wrong spot and they're just really good in the secondary they they they, they work together and you know, Justin Herbert wasn't able to really pick them apart, in my opinion, because of that. And you know, because you know, Greg Roman's a little bit more vanilla. Uh, but you know, when you watch the Saints, you know, <clears throat> Derek Carr, he, he looks totally different. So I, I don't really want to say like <laughs> what's happening there, but a lot of it was you have to throw in some tight windows, you have to throw at these linebackers. And, uh, you know, Herbert wasn't really doing that because I, I think in his mind, like, I don't want to throw the ball over so I can take any chances because I could, we're just going to run the ball down these guys' throats and they're yeah. going to stop us running the ball. So who cares? That's what Jim Harbaugh thought. Jim Harbaugh's probably like, just just don't force it. Just uh, just hit that. Just hit the check down, man. We're going to get eight yards rushing the next play anyways. So <laughs> don't force it, Justin. And I think that was, that was a lot of it. But, you know, Derek Carr is like throwing more downfield, trying to, you know, hit him between the seams. And I think that's what Gardner Minshew's going to have to do. He's got to attack these guys in the middle of the field. And I'm going to show that. So that's basically what we're going to go over today. Um, thoughts on Malcolm Kuhn's injury before we get into this preview? Yeah, I mean, it sucks. Um, obviously, for him, for the Raiders as a whole, uh, you know, hopeful that we were hopeful that he'd be able to come back. Knew he was going to be injured for a while and out for a while, but hopefully he'd come back to be that second pass rusher on the edge uh, opposite of Max Crosby and really take advantage. And I mean, I think I've talked about it before. I thought Malcolm Kuhn showed a ton of growth um, as a run defender too. And I think that's part of the, that's one of the weaknesses at least last week where, uh, you know, hopefully Tyree Wilson can help out with that. But um, the other edge was, was a, was a spot that teams were able to exploit, or at least the Ravens were able to exploit when, uh, when guys like Janarius Robinson and, and Charles Snowden were in the game. So, Sucks for that on that level too, and it sucks for him too because this was going to be a contract year. I think the way he finished last season was uh was uh going to be a big year for him, and you know could have earned some money, and unfortunately uh, didn't even get get going. So yeah, it sucks on a lot of levels. But Tyree Wilson, your time, your opportunity, man. This is your opportunity to prove yourself as a, a top ten pick. So kind of the, on the next man up philosophy on that on that angle. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll see what these guys can do, man. I mean, Tyree Wilson has to kind of – he's got to step it up. Um, yeah. You know, Charles Snowden and Eugene Robinson is, is, uh, is okay, but it's not Malcolm yeah. Coon. So Tyree Wilson, who was dropped the top 10, we want to see – you at least play top 10 against the run at least. At least. Yeah, like, for sure. At least get that. At least the, set the edge. <laughs> yeah, set the damn edge because, you know, the, the, all the runs I feel like are have been to the left side, and I, they, they need to get that fixed up and really quickly. In my opinion, yeah. So, yeah. All right, let's get let's get to this, this film. Let's get to the preview. I'm, <clears throat> all right. So we're gonna start with JC Horn. So my corner up here this is JC right here. So uh, 
he's just a tough ass player, man. Look at look at this tackle right here. This is a little pop pass with the Raiders do these pop passes too. We saw this all last week. These little pop passes, Trey Tucker. Here he is, just fighting through it. Ain't gonna play there. He's a good tackler too. Oh, he's been physical. Yeah, he's a physical guy, man. Boom, tossing him. <clears throat> this one, this is this is a uh, interception that he got here. And this one, talk about these guys are, are so good in zone. Is you know, watch them communicate. Watch Mike Jackson. He's pointing right. He's telling them that you you got fifteen, right? And they have to play action. And you see oh, Corns. He, he's he's not covering anybody, so he's just fading, covering grass. Herbert could have threw this. I mean, he has an arm for it, but like I said, you know, we're we're we're, we're going to run the ball down the throats. But then you don't want to do this, which I like. What JC Horn does is he he. You know, he's in the zone. This is his area. So he, he fades back. He follows the quarterback's eyes. He sees where the ball's going. He just makes a nice interception. Nice. Perfect scramble throw. <clears throat> and then uh, here's JC Horn again right here. This Horn right there. And this will talk about him tackling. This this is a, their one good run play. I'm going to show it because it was JC Horn making a great play. Great tackle right here on Gus Edwards. Look at that tackle. Beautiful. Just the type of player he is, man. He's he's just a good player all around. And here in this concept, you see him. So let me back it up a little bit here. So he's gonna be one on one on Josh Palmer at the top here, and you can just see he just stays square, doesn't open the gate extra early, gets his hands on him, and he's right stuck on him. Right, it's great press coverage, great little soft shoe right there. <clears throat> and then you watch, and, and while I do this, I, the, the this is cover three, right? So I just want you to see how these guys look and how they set it up. So this is a cover three, and it doesn't look that way pre-snap. If you're, if you're watching this and you're Justin Herbert, you're probably thinking this is probably a man because like he's lined up here. These guys aren't aren't really set up over this bunch, but then they do a good job of uh, fading out right here. Jackson he plays inside instead of playing outside, right on the cover three, and he does a good job of of taking out these little stick routes, right? So they, they yeah. are well coached. I mean, this he kind of gives it up on the scramble drill. Herbert misses, but the initial read is not there. So these guys are really well coached. You can see how well coached they are. They're never in the wrong spot. So it's something to notice. So you, you see it again here on this one. You're going to get uh, a bunch of uh, basically some crossers here. You're going to get a, a route here from 81 and watch how these guys communicate, right? So, J.C. Horn has nobody coming to his side. He looks exactly to these crossers. He double teams this guy, right? Um, then you see Johnson was maybe open, but then that kind of shades in there. And then maybe Herbert could have hit here really quickly. But these windows are closing so fast. There was like a pick there at any point. Like he, if, if he waited too long or it was too late, there was an interception, right? I mean, these guys are driving on it. And maybe he could have went here, but that guy's driving on it. And I can make the case. I mean, he has arm strength to get those balls in, but if you're good, we're, we're, we got Gardner Minshew, so we're really, really <laughs> those examples. But I mean, you can't beat JC Horn under the top. That's one thing. Uh, but it, it has to be a really good throw, or not even really good throw, just maybe a good play from my receiver, too. As you see here, he's in press coverage. Like I said, always stay square. He's right there. He's right there in coverage. And he just barely misses knocking this ball away. <laughs> but yeah. it was a touchdown. And you'll see it from this backside here. Like how close he is to, to like, <laughs> he just barely missed it. Yeah. Barely missed. Right. And of course, I mean, if you're to catch these guys deep, Right, because these guys in cover three, which I like what Kubiak does, because they play a lot of cover three. They don't play a lot too high. They they show too high, but they're a cover they're a cover three team. All right, they're gonna get back into cover three for the most part. And you see what this does to them in cover three. You get the get the the hitch right there, and you get JC Horn isolated. He's expecting some help over the top on the deep ball, but you're not getting it because this guy <laughs> drove on the dig. It's classic Mills and Derek Car Car Caro. Because I'm not calling him Derek Carr after watching this film. <laughs> it's Derek Carro. It's not... <laughs> it kind of seems. Hell... What? What's... Go ahead. Matt. I was gonna say this was a hell of a throw. This was like the 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 uh like set first play of the year or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh Crazy yeah, JC Horn. You can see at the end of that, he was pissed. <laughs>
<laughs> and, and then you can see here, and then Mike Jackson's no slouch either. Like I said here, he does a good job of playing his double move. You see, I mean, and that's a pretty fast guy. He could have broke on that. He does a good job getting a little uh, speed turn there and gets his hands on the ball, almost picks it off. I'm watching right time here. Almost picks this ball off. So he's not he's not a slouch either. Mike Jackson's not a slouch. He's with the Seahawks last year. And then uh then the safeties aren't bad either. This is Nick Scott right here against Taysom Hill. So this is maybe you can talk about this is Brock Bars. This is not a bad throw either. I mean, it's right there where it needs to be, but he plays through it, fends the pass, knocks the ball out. Tawan Johnson was open in the middle. Oh, yeah, he was. He's wide open. <laughs> Old school Raiders fans would just circle. He could have threw it here. Yeah. All right, here you go. <laughs> Those are to the quarterback playing tight end. Yeah, exactly. So, like I said, these guys play a lot of cover three, right? I mean, he's got a lot of cover three. You see here, it looks too, it looks like too high, but we're going into three buzz, boo, three buzz, right? It's right in the box. But so you got to throw into these zones because these zones are going to be there. This is a great throw. But this is stuff Gardner Mitchell's gonna have to do. He's gonna have to throw into these zones here. So watch one more time here. You gotta you gotta attack Mr. Jewel. Mr. Jewel is he he he's not the fastest guy in the world. He's not the fastest, he's not the best coverage guy. Just lay it right over the top right there. Attack the family jewels. <laughs> exactly. Because that's what we're gonna see it here. And this is a play they can copy. They can copy this play. I mean, maybe the other play, maybe you could say Mitch, you can't make that throw because it's arm strength, but he can do this, right? So we get in play action bootleg. We're gonna get a basically a quick out from Shahid, so, and we're going to get a corner out here from Foster Moreau, and it's basically off the bootleg. It's kind of create a high-low concept, and you see right here, it's right there. There's an the opening right there. Boom. Nice ball. Yeah. And you see it over the top there. And then, and and you got to attack the inside, like I'm talking about, attack the inside. So you can see we're going to get a quick slant here, maybe a choice route, whatever, but it's, it ends up being a quick slant here from that McConkie. You get the ball out quick there. Boom. These things are open against these guys with the cover three that they're playing. Like it is cover three all day. See, once again, here it looks like too high. We're in cover three again. Then you attack the middle of the field, get these openings here, make a throw there. And that's something the Raiders can do. Too. You see those digs. Raiders can do these digs all day. Easy stuff. So, yeah, it's a lot of cover three. We're, we're in the too high revolution. These guys are playing cover three. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, it's, it's on the film through two weeks. A lot of cover three. Also, Kubiak be cook, cooking, man. Where did he where did he become? Isn't he like a run guy? Uh, No, he's the pass game coordinator for the Niners. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Right now. Kyle, he's a Shanahan McVay guy. Oh, he, he's a Kubiak. He, he's a he's an old school shit. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Mike so let's Mann. get to yeah, 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 exactly. So let's 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 just get to this run game, and you can already see it here. We're getting rid of a little outside zone here. You already see it. You already see this whole what's happening here. <laughs> he's like nobody's touching him. Nobody's gonna touch him. Yeah, no. The first guy touches is about seventeen yards downfield, and these guys just they, they just get bullied up front. Like these guys are getting pushed all the way back. This is constant. This is just a constant beat down. See here. Now we're getting a little more outside zone here. Like, like he's not just not even getting touched. Like, look at the push that they're getting from this offensive line. And you know, this, this is gonna be somebody you should have drafted Tommy Sifuaga, you know, type of thing. But that's fine. But you're, you're seeing how these guys are just just destroying these guys up front. Like, there's no way these linebackers are gonna do anything. Nothing. There's nothing they could do. This is a pure beatdown. This is just like it's, it's not good at all. So you see here, like James Damian Clowney goes inside. They're under running toss here, and I mean, and they have this wide alignment. Like they they are like we're gonna stop the pass. That's the thing. Like they're getting bullied here, and they got this wide alignment right here. This is super wide nine here, and just the setup of this is just not good for them. And you see here, you just yeah. just, just like. <laughs> This is a free seven. It's a free seventeen. On top of it, the motion too. Like if you watch 
watch how they were like they already had they're already given up like a lot of it and like you see the motion brings uh jewel inside that's mm -hmm. set up perfectly that's great play design yeah and then we get 51 on a db just dominant and it, like i said it wasn't just the saints it wasn't just the saints it's the chargers too so chargers of course they're, they're gonna go more power here and just bully these guys and this is without this is without brown that, that was with brown this is without him so you see these guys just getting pushed see uh i think that's uh i think believe that's all right there moving that guy yeah down blocks everywhere see from the other side here i just getting bullied Cut back lanes are open. Yeah, it's, it's, it's there, man. There's another one with Gus Edwards. This one, this one's great because Slater just rides 94. You already see it, huh, Matt? So you, you, so you're yep. just kind of laughing a little bit. It's <laughs> <laughs> Slater just, just dominates this guy. You see 75. And you got to think about the Raiders played pretty good against this uh, offensive line. So you can talk about, oh, the offensive line, the, the whatever. They did not look like this. Okay. No. This has never happened in that game. If Dion Divine, the Divine Diablo went to the right gap, we, we didn't even talk about that. Right. So just look at this hole. Right. And you see yeah. Alt looping around. It's just free. It's free eight yards. You know, and Gus Edwards is, is a slow, slow player. So when you get to, to the Dobbins here, it's, this is when it gets to, into the speed. Right. So we get basically a long trap. Yeah. Long traps, it looks like. Right. Or, or was the long trap? Or this guy just kind of broke through. Oh, yeah. I, was to, I was trying to figure. No, because watch, watch a uh, Slater. He like steps down and then swim moves him. Yeah. So yeah. So long trap here, and then you see Slater get up there, and then two and can make a tackle. Is it's still nine yards downfield? This is this is a nine yard run, guys. It's second and one, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> like maybe it's not as like dominant as the Saints, but it's second and one. And then, then he, here's the, the the run to Dobbins here, the, the touchdown, right? We're getting some outside zone here. And he's just following Gus Edwards. And just look at this. Look at look at these lanes, bro. Like, it, it is going – you can already see the touchdown opening up. You got 44 just bullying Jewel. And he's off to the races. What's J.K. Dobbins doing? Flipping in the end zone on like three knee on three bad knees and torn Achilles. <laughs> Come on, bro. And here's another one. Like, it, it's just these guys aren't winning at all. You know what I mean? There's there's no winning here. C75 gets up to 54. He kind of just pushes him out the way. Dobbins does a great job of setting him up there. There's 20. And I'm saying you could eat, if you, if you, you can eat, might even get some Garden Minshew mixed in this. You get a little Garden Minshew run this week. I, I, I swear it's the play you got hurt at because it's just, it's just, his ankle just doesn't land great there. But I, I, I just watch this play because he doesn't, he doesn't go down. Like he's really running here. Yeah. He's trying to score. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little shoulder tuck there too. I know. Oh, good old Harba. Good old Jim. All right. <laughs> Justin Kaepernick. Right? That's what I was watching. I watched that for like five times. Like, did he really do like an arc read with Justin Kaepernick? <laughs> All right. Well, you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, it, it, It's not going to be the easiest to pass on him. You can. It's just not going to be. It's just not a cake. Yeah. Walk, right. Yeah. Um. You, you really get some passes completed, but you want to be able to run the ball on these guys. Because I, I really believe if you get into the position where you can't run the ball, you might be a little bit trouble with the team because they're, they're just so well coached in the secondary. There's not going to be a yeah. lot of open, open. You're going to have to be, have a quarterback that's really patient and test windows, anticipate. And we see Minshew do that for a half. We haven't seen him do that for a whole game yeah. yet. So that's why it's going to be important to run the ball because if they can't, the, what, you know, what uh, Ivero likes to do, in the secondary, it, it, it can uh, it might cause them a little bit problems. They don't really have a yeah. pass rush that much either. Uh, that I really could highlight. It's nothing really special. But like, if if you can't run the ball on these guys, and you get to like third and longs, I believe, because even when the the Saints had third and longs, third and nines, they they weren't getting those those type of plays. Same thing with the Chargers. They had third and longs. It was not a good look for them, right? So it, it's important to be able to run the ball on this team because I think the secondary is very well coached and they know how to play. 
Yeah. And I think on top of it too, especially without Derek Brown, like that's where all their talent is, right? Like Josie Jewell's not great. I mean, Shaq Thompson has been good in the past, but for the most part, like their secondary has a lot of dudes on it that can play, but up front, they don't have quite the, quite as many of those guys that, um, that you really want to, or they have more guys that you want to expose. I think my only, uh, my only hesitation is like a lot of the, the stuff that you were showing seemed like there was like cutback lanes open. And as we saw, Zamir White doesn't uh, have the best feel for that and whatnot. But again, if they switch it up to a little bit more, more power, I think they'll, they'll be in shape. I don't think I don't yeah. trust the, uh, or I trust the Raiders O line, even though it's been, hasn't been great to, to execute a little bit better than uh, what they have been doing. I mean, if you got to run Madison, man, run Madison. Even though Madison, you know, yeah. uh, you know, he was not the best at it either, but he's better than Zamir White. He is. So yeah. if they got to, you know, attack these guys in a different way, then you got to put Madison in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, dude. All right, dude. Uh, let's get to Adam Thielen and Andy Dalton. Okay, go ahead. You got me up there? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, like I'm saying, going to go into these two, uh, Andy Dalton and Adam Thielen. I know it's a new offense and all, but hey, these are the two guys that do have some chemistry together. Um, and again, like I said, one of the things that stood out the most was they seem to have like a, this veteran connection where they're just kind of on the same page a lot. Um, take a look at a couple scramble drills here. That you'll see it on this one. Like nothing's open initially. I think this look, I, think, I believe this is, yeah, cover three look from the Seattle. Everything's pretty much covered up. Dalton, this is one thing that he did really well, especially when the pocket started breaking down. Like you see that at, at, we're losing on the edge a little bit here, a little bit of pressure up the middle, bails out of the pocket. And then you can see Thielen as soon as he starts leaving, like Thielen goes and finds the open grass. And then Dalton ends up hitting him. Also, hell of a game by Dalton. He had another rep. I don't think I have it on here where he was taking some shots in this game, wasn't afraid to take one of the chops and let it rip. And that's a hell of a ball, too. Again, you got Thielen running running wide open. I don't know what 52 is doing. Um, and they ended up picking it up. And again, for two guys that don't have a ton of reps together, they had a pretty good connection. Again, I think it's a lot because they have so much experience between them uh, just in general. See it here from the end zone view. Nice. Nice ball. Going to be another scramble drill on this one. A little bit different circumstance because Thielen's going to do a good job of recognizing, hey, I'm already in the window. Like You can see him right here. He's like, look, I know there's scrambling going on a little bit uh, with Dalton climbing up in the pocket here. He's going to check. You can see Thielen check right here. Hey, is someone barreling down on me? Nope, I'm in the open area. 23 here. This is what you can't do in a scramble drill. You can't be sitting here and, and, and covering grass. Got to find your guy and stick to him. And because he doesn't, Dalton ends up finding him. They get a nice throw on the run. Pick up for pick up the first down. So again, gonna be big on those scramble drills because that's how they got a lot of their uh, a lot of their yards uh, in that first game that they played together. Uh, this one. So this is the one I was talking about earlier. So we're gonna see Thielen. Uh, from here, run a, a little seam read route, excuse me. And with this seam read, basically what he's doing is if it's middle field close, so if we have someone in the middle, like a post safety or something like that, he's going to run a curl. If it's middle field open, like a too high coverage, then he's going to run a seam up the hash marks. Uh, and what Seattle does, you can see like right now, they're giving like a cover three or cover one look pre-snap. And then post-snap, you can see the, this safety, I think it's Julian Love working out towards the numbers uh, and then this safety working wide two for this cover two look. So then that's giving you a middle of the field open read. If you're this seam route or this receiver slot receiver or the quarterback, Andy Dalton. But what Seattle does, if you notice Bobby Wagner here, he's dropping in Tampa two. So it's really middle field close. So it's a lot of information to process and a lot for two guys to be on the same page on. But again, two guys who have nearly a quarter century of NFL experience between them. They've seen this stuff before. They're both on the same page. You can see Thielen. He sees Wagner's parked here in the middle of the field. So he runs the curl. And then I pause that pretty much great timing. Like you can see this with Dalton. Like again, he's seeing it the same way. Thielen's not even uh, out of his break, got his back turned to the quarterback before Dalton's letting it rip. Again, hit him, go pick up the first down. They picked up a lot of third and longs on this. And a lot of it was, or a lot of third and longs in this game. And a lot of it was them just being on the same page and, again, having that chemistry together. This one's not quite as uh, impressive, just going to be a little bootleg with Thielen running a curl here at the bottom of the screen. But, again, you can see their timing is on point. Devin Witherspoon kind of bails out. Like, Witherspoon doesn't do have bad coverage on this because it looks like he's basically just bailing post-snap. 
He does a decent job of breaking on the route for Thielen being in his blind spot. But a good ball is going to beat this, and a good on-time ball more than anything mm-hmm. to beat that. And then you can see Thielen get the little make uh, make Witherspoon miss a little bit here. Thielen's not the fastest or the quickest dude anymore, but he is decent after the catch. He had a couple plays where he made some guys miss with like one cut. Again, just being a veteran. But same thing I'm talking about before you watch when Dalton starts to throw this. Like he's rearing back to throw as before Thielen's even out of his break. Because he sees uh, Witherspoon with his hips open, and Thielen kind of gets to Witherspoon's blind spot here again. Perfect on time pass, end up picking up the first down. This one you see a little bit more timing. This is now to paint the picture a little bit, and in fairness to the Seahawks, this is when they're up like three possessions late in the game. Mm-hmm. What we're going to see is another seam route here from uh, from Thielen against cover three. It's also a pretty good play call because. They're running the, the little short in route underneath it. Um, and like that's going to keep this corner occupied a little bit. He takes the cheese for a second, hesitates. And then again, great timing by Dalton. He sees that corner kind of get caught in no man's land for a second, lets it rip and hits Thielen. Also, a hell of a freaking catch from Thielen, too, uh, on this. Another tough, another example of these two guys' toughness. Got the corner on his back, safety barreling down on him. Now, Grant, I think. I think this corner ends up taking the brunt of the hit here. Mm-hmm. But again, pretty Ooh. nice catch here in traffic to, to put points on the board. And again, great timing between these two. Two guys who barely played together. All right, which one we got here? All right, so moving on, I want to show a few of these clips because the Raiders have been playing a lot of man coverage. And that was kind of the other spot where uh, Thielen and, and Dalton were, were beating up on the Seahawks is they're beating man coverage pretty well. You see this nice whip route. I think that's... Yeah. I think that's Jackson, actually. Yes, yeah, Mike Jackson. Now these guys are teammates. Yeah, now these guys are teammates. Like you see, this is a dirty little whip route. Ooh. Gets out to the flat. Not the greatest throw from Dalton, but again, facing some pressure here. Part of what I was talking about with the toughness, <clears throat> can't finish that throw. Thielen makes a great catch. Goes up, get a nice, hand, get two hands on it. And again, picking up the third down conversion here. So this next one is actually going to be more of a miscommunication on Seattle's part. They're going to run a little mesh concept here. And the, this 23 thinks and they're going to pass it off. He's obviously not on the same page as 20. I think that's Julian Love there. Again, so Thielen's going to end up being wide open. And after the catch here, you'll see him put a nice little move. Damn near scores. I mean, I guess technically Diggs ends up making this tackle, but still mm. not a bad move, not a little bad, bad cut back. So that's going to be huge for the Raiders. I mean, we did see them execute that well with uh, with Corey Bennett and and Jack Jones last uh, last week. If you remember being, me being fired up about that one, <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, this is what can happen. Got to be on the same page. They did have a few good man uh, reps against man coverage last week. One more against man. Now this one, I'm kind of curious for for BD's take on this because. My thought on this is on on this uh, with the safety, like mm-hmm. you can see here, like Thielen just kind of wins on the over route. Um, is this safety to me? Like I know his primary responsibility is, hey, we got to take away the deep route, and part of it is when he th- sees Dalton scrambling, he kind of starts opening up and trying to cheat and get, take away DJ Chark running right the go route. Yeah, but to me, and I get that as his primary um, responsibility, the safeties. But to me, like in a perfect world. I'd like to see him be a little bit more aware and then help out on against Thielen in the in the slot because like for me Witherspoon okay yeah maybe Chark has a step on him but he's not in a bad spot and right here like I mean 23 just gets cooked by Thielen on this over route so I'd like to see again in a perfect world maybe the safety whether it be Trevor Merrick or Marcus Epps like open his hips and uh, maybe stay square a little bit longer and be able to help to take away this guy like if they're gonna beat you with someone else tip your cap kind of deal. But again, another nice throw by Dalton here. Had a really good sense for pressure in this game, too. Like, you're going to see Seattle start to win here. Once he sees that, let me buy some extra time, let Thielen get open, set my feet, make a nice throw down the field. So I'm telling you, man, don't sleep on Andy Dalton, man. The red rifle was cooking. He was firing, dude. It's a nice ball. I mean, he's played well those last two times he's got the start. He has played yeah. well. Even he's even not a bad, yeah, right. yeah, he's not a bad starter by any means, that's for sure. He's a solid one, not a great one, 
but he's solid at least. He can win you a couple of games. He gives them a better chance to win. All right, but moving on to uh, a few of the incompletions. These are going to be the better plays, a little more encouraging. Um, this is what you want to see from Nate Hobbs this week against Thielen and man coverage. See if Thielen's going to run a little slot fade. I mean, this is played perfectly. Maybe you could say turn his, turn your head and get a chance for the pick, but playing a little soft or a little press coverage here. Uses his hand, disrupts some timing, and again, plays the hands at the catch point. Go get a PBU. Thielen was asking for, for PI on this, but it is, there is nowhere to be found. This is just great coverage. Yeah, that's just, it's a great yeah. play. Yeah, that's a great play. See it again. This time it's going to be, I believe this is a cover one look. Um, and you're going to see 23 here. He's going to try and take away the out route, play with outside leverage. Thielen runs the out anyway, but hey, we're in already in good position for it. Um, again, if you remember from my Jacory and Bennett break down, this is a little bit of what I'm talking about. Opposite situation where Bennett was playing a, an in or playing the playing with inside leverage, but this is kind of what I'm talking about. Where like, hey, trust your leverage here, and if he ends up running into you, we're in a great spot to be able to make the play. Like no PBU or anything here, but because we have tight coverage, this ball's got to be perfect. Got to be right here and uh, on at the correct height too. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's a PBU and maybe even a pick six. So. Again, another good example of of how to play these guys in man coverage and how to stick with them. Hopefully, Nate Hobbs gets gets uh, gets rep, more reps like these and less reps like the other ones before. All right, our last clip. It's going to be this was actually the next target after that uh, seam read I was showing you guys earlier, and you're going to see Bobby Wagner being a veteran. Plays it a lot differently this time. Again, you run you run the same play call at that guy who's been in the league for forever too. Like he's going to figure it out. Um, Seattle's going to run cover six this time, but they they're going to be have a have a Wagner be the Tampa two dropper. And again, he's going to stay deep, keep Thielen in front of him. You can see like if you compare the last two reps, like he has plays with a lot more depth. I think this is third and long too, which helps. Mm-hmm. But he's going to do a much better job of keeping Thielen in front of him. That way, when he runs the curl route. You see right there, Wagner's there to collapse on it. Again, I don't think he gets the PBU here, but hey, we're at least contesting the catch, getting our hand involved, and making them making that a tougher, uh, tougher completion. So, one way you're going to want to play these uh, these seam reads against these dudes is is just keep them in front of you. That way, you can at least give you, be, have a chance to to drive on the route and get a PBU, maybe even a pick. But yeah, but yeah, like I said, man. Really wish Bryce Young was playing more one more week because uh, you know I know it's a new offense and everything, but those two guys look pretty good together and that was their first year in that offense, uh, that offense too. So be interesting to see how they do. And, and then the added factor of Deontay Johnson, who's an upgrade over over DJ Chark, who I was talking about earlier, um, will be interesting too. But yeah, two guys that, like I said, they did pretty well on the last time they were on the field together. Yeah, man. <clears throat> I mean, like I said, Dalton didn't play bad uh, the year against the Saints with the Saints when he started. Yeah. Of course, he got replaced by Derek Carr after that. Um, and then, you know, he didn't look bad in the game last year he played. So, yeah, I mean, if the Raiders sleep on which I, I don't think they are. I think AP's going to have yeah. them ready for this game and, you know, let them know that they, they're not a big time and they still got a lot of things to get better. Um, yeah. You know, you know, they're not going to be sipping the Kool Aid after the, basically after this game, mm-hmm. after the last game. So I, I think they're going to come to play. I just think the game's gonna, the game's going to be closer than people yeah. want it to be. It's going to be like you know, it's it's going to be like a fourteen to ten halftime. Fans going to be pissed, like whoa, fourteen to ten. It's, it's going to be one of those games, right? It, um, it is going to be, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be one of those games where it's it's where it they might end up winning by like ten or, or eleven points, but it's going to we're going to be a little like this game's tighter than it should be. I think yeah. Andy Dalton's gonna make it a lot closer than than you know than it would be. Yeah, I mean, I still think it's gonna be a, a more grind out win than, like you said, than uh, than a lot of people expect. And I think the other factor in this too, I brought up Deontay Johnson. Uh, I think part of the reason why Bryce Young got benched is not only did they bring in another weapon, and then on top of it, drafted Leggett, who hasn't done much this year uh, yet. But again, that could be part of the quarterback play. Is the uh, the Panthers improved their offensive line a ton? They spent, I think, like probably close to like a hundred million dollars on their two guards uh, between Robert Hunt and, um, and uh, Damian Lewis, who are, mm. who was there, you know, those two spots were two of their, their biggest issues last year. And they got uh Austin Corbett um, back who was, uh, he only played like four games for them last year. He's playing center for them this year. So 
I think there's a lot of more talent on the Panthers offense than people might realize, uh, especially compared to last year. And I mean, you saw Andy Dalton with a, with a weaker offensive line and not as great weapons uh, have a good game last week. So yeah, uh, I don't think they're sleeping on me either. I think Patrick Graham um, was talking them up a lot in his press conference and, and uh, how much of a challenge they are. Um, so hoping that the, the whole team takes that philosophy because this is it with Andy, especially with Andy Dalton, that quarterback, this is still a very much losable game um, as Raider fans should come to know these little trap games become a, uh, become their Achilles heel from it feels like over the last 20 years. Right yeah. And if they go beat them down and then we know what type of team this Raiders is. Yeah, so, I mean, that, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's, that's basically what we learn. We're going to learn a lot of things yeah. about this Raiders team, but um, I, I still think they're the better team overall. So I think that they should For sure. win this game. Um, it, it's just going to, they, they got, they got to make some turnovers too in this game too. I think they got to make any don't make some mistakes, get some pressure on them. Cause still the tackles uh, for that. I mean, I know Tyler Moton is pretty good, but he can be beat. Taylor Moton, he can be beat though, and you know, and then um, <clears throat> Quanta. the dude from NC State, yeah, yeah, he he can definitely be beat. So we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes, right, we'll with, with these offensive line and how they how they end up playing. All right, guys, so that's the preview. Uh, so yeah, check out uh, this preview. You got the film preview, then that got Friday Night Live. We do the over unders for this week, so check that out as well. And then we'll be back with the instant reaction uh, after the game, and we'll see you guys then. But hit the subscribe button, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And we're out of here. Peace. Peace.